I was a little uh, taken aback and unexpected news from Nisha when I got the call. Um, but then after I processed it, I thought, well, we need to start thinking about how we're going to proceed with this. And um, so I started Googling um, different companies that conduct superintendent searches. And um, I wanted to share with the board the list of companies I listed and for you guys to consider how we want to proceed, maybe decide. I want to assure the public that no matter how we move forward, there will be uh, participation from the community and parents and staff throughout the process to get input from them, uh, however the process unfolds. So um, here, here goes. I only had two people respond so far. Um, I actually couldn't find a very many companies, and I started looking on districts that I knew um, were going through a superintendent search or had completed one recently to get names of companies on their website as far as who they utilize. So the first thing I did was contact MSBA. There's a Paul James I talked to, and um, we've used him twice, MSBA twice in the past for doc both Dr. Whipke and Dr. Patel. And there was a Brent Underwood that uh, was a retired superintendent that conducted that search. I thought that if we decided to use somebody like that, that we should uh, use a different um, staff person from MSBA. And uh, Mr. James assured me that they had a, a man named Dr. Steve Brotherton, who's a retired superintendent from Afton. He retired in 2018 that would be available to work with us if we chose them. And their cost is 8% of the starting salary of the superintendent. The previous search, and it was, let's see, $16,220. So I think some people had thought it was much more than that. The other company that I found was Ray & Associates. Um, I, there's a, like a Google form you can fill out. I got no response from them. Uh, Springfield considered Ray and Associates are this GR rec recruiting. Um, I just found that this morning and did not have time to make a request. Um, and then the last company was McPherson and Jake Jacobson, and they responded right away. Um, their cost is $17,900, and they go through five phases that they engage with each of the stakeholder groups. They actually already sent me a proposal. Um, so. Those are the ones I found. I don't know if the board wants to do some more looking for companies or you have other thoughts about how to proceed. So if we want to have a discussion about that, I want to hear everybody's thoughts and then we can go from there. My hope would be that um, whatever we decide, like if we do decide a company, then we could at the next board meeting have that, have or a couple of companies, we could have them present and make a decision or if you just think we get information and we share it and we, we don't have to have a pr presentation, we just look at their proposals. I don't know. Those are some ideas I had, but I'm talking too much and I want to hear from the board. Main point I want to make sure the public knows is no matter what we do, everybody's going to get input into the selection process. The, uh, uh, the only thing that concerns, when we went through this before a few years ago, it was, uh, uh, it happened sooner than it happened now. So we're a little bit further behind the eight ball than we were before. So yes. it's a, it's a involved process and uh, 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 it extends the timeline considerably. And so, and uh, the other problem is, you know, Dr. Patel was selected by Clayton. And again, congratulations, as I said before, you've ended up in probably one of the most uh, uh, desirable school districts in the state of Missouri. They have twice as much money to spend per kid. And uh, for you, it's a career step that is absolutely extraordinary and you need to be congratulated for, for that. And uh, it's sad to see you go, but uh, as with uh, Mr. Uh, Dr. Wicke, uh, you know, that was an improvement in his career for him and you never want to hold anybody back in their career, that's for sure. And so congratulations again. and. Like I said, back in the day when I was super superintendent, we considered that school district Camelot. So uh, I hope you meet Prince Charming there too, okay? okay. Anybody have any thoughts? Carol. Um, Mrs. Hanson, I know there's been some discussion of, about um, 
the the board um, taking over the um, applications. I, I don't know too much about how that's done, but has anybody thought about that? Uh, I know someone had mentioned it earlier that maybe um, that we as a board would uh, sort of take over uh, getting applications and interviewing and bringing in the public uh, at, at normal um, questionnaires like that has been done in the past by a company. Has anybody thought about that? I, I don't know how to do it. I don't know how in depth it is. I don't know if anybody on the board uh, has the knowledge or the interest to do that, but it has, it is another thought. Carol, I've actually participated in um, doing applications in that form at the college when we've done two president searches. Um, and so I'm familiar with it. And usually what they do is we handle it um, through our HR and the board. So it's coordinated together. We form a committee, which um, would be uh, board members. We would have uh, parents, staff, and they would be part of the committee that would organize this. So it, it can be complicated to do. Um, I would like more information. I, MSBA, I've worked with them before on the re, uh, research, um, but the McPherson, I've not heard of them. So I'd like to look at their, what they do um, and what they offer. Well, um, I've got the MSBA contract and I've got the information from McPherson. And I, they have five, fa McPherson, um, I'm trying to remember what, I guess I'll go through McPherson first and then people that were on the board can help me remember how, how it worked with MSBA. They have five phases. They basically look for characteristics of the new superintendent and get a timeline for it and, and, and do advertising. That's the first one. Then they get stakeholder input through meetings. And I don't know because of COVID if those meetings would be held virtually, but they look at all the groups. They do administrators, support staff, um, teaching parents community and so they do that process um, they bring that back to the board the input from that and from they meet with the board to get their ideas um, they distribute all the applications and advertise and get those applications they do the reference check they develop interview questions and then the lady that I talked to there's two different people that would be on our they have teams in st. Louis let me find their names I thought I marked it. Give me a minute here. This is like a 39 page proposal. Here it is. There's one, they're both retired. Dr. Jeanette Tendale, Tendai, and Dr. Judith Seclair Stein. That's the woman I talked to. Um, and um, we can add in our own interview questions, but they have some standard ones. Uh, and they said with their stakeholder groups, um, I left it in my notes at home, but they have four basic questions they ask. And we, again, we, the board can ask for additional questions, but they have four basic questions they ask of all the stakeholder groups. Um, they select, the, they give the information to the board about possible candidates to interview, and then we decide the primary ones. Um, the candidates meet with the stakeholders, and then they interview with the board. Okay. And after they meet with the stakeholders, apparently they bring that information back to the board, the, the, the feedback from the stakeholders when they met with them. And they explained very carefully to me on the phone today that they don't, they clarify to the stakeholders. They're not making the decision, but they're giving information for the board to consider. And then they, then afterwards, the other thing they can do is they can have another phase five where they meet with the board and do a performance development activity and the new superintendent, and they even help the superintendent develop goals in conjunction with the board. So, and then they have something that's unique, which is that if the board, the new superintendent leaves within two, before two years of a contract is completed, then they will do a new superintendent search for us free. That's, 
Right. I didn't understand a thing you said there at last. The last part was they have a, a clause that's a guarantee if the superintendent that's selected by the board leaves before, for any reason, before two years, if they don't complete at least two full years of service, then their agency will con conduct another superintendent search free of charge. Well, hopefully we, we oh. can get out of this pattern of, of uh, just losing saying. superintendents after a few years. And no, was, the, that the, was that MSBA that had that clause in there no, or was it one of the other McPherson. ones? That's the okay. McPherson and Jacobson. And then um, MSBA, as I recall, we sat down with them and they, we did um, help me out, people that were on the board. Seems like we, we developed a list of characteristics that we wanted in a superintendent and the same thing was done with stakeholders and those were live meetings my, or maybe there were surveys, but I know they had stakeholders meetings. That was brought back to us. They advertised, then we had a meeting where we reviewed the applicants and chose the finalists to interview. Um, now we, and I don't think this was anything with the MSBA, but at the time, the board decided not to have the community interview the finalists. That was not done. Um, when we, we did the process with Dr. The, Patel, uh, the, but I, I'm The process that you described is exactly this process that they did when I became superintendent, where you met with the community groups and then you, then that information went to the board and then the board did their thing. So I don't mean to be, do, be doing all the talking. Uh, uh -huh. Carol had, had asked some questions. I don't know if anybody else has some thoughts um, about it. Do we know how many times or how many schools they've worked with this particular company? Well, I can, I can get references and they said uh, they can even, um, um, they can give us the resumes of the two people that were, are in the area. This company, McPherson and Jacobson, they're like a national company and they had in their proposal, which I didn't have time to copy, I thought whatever we do, we can, I can get all the information. They have, um, they have people in all these different states and then those people are available to conduct searches within those states. So um, okay, that's I don't know how saying. long they've been in business or anything. I don't have all that information. Yeah. Ms. Hansen. Another question, are those other companies specifically um, education-based? Ba uh, are they, are they headhunters for other uh, vocations besides superintendent? Well, I, um, I think Ray and Associates are, and um, to be honest, I didn't get much chance to look at GR Recruiting. That's the one that Springfield recently hired. Um, I didn't get a chance to look at their website, and I didn't get to reach out to them, so I really don't know. Um, but I know McPherson, Jacobs, McPherson and Jacobson, of course, MSBA and Ray Associates, and I remember that name from someplace else. Um, I know they're exclusively school. I, you know, I don't know that I, they, they may have other components that do for other kind of agency, but I didn't really go in depth and look at that. So I just, Jim. I guess my only concern is, is that the pool is being diminished very quickly and uh, unfortunately we're at the end of that pool and that's going to be a consideration for us I can tell you that. So I guess my question is do you want me to find out information about all the ones agency I've found so far or do any of you guys want to look for other agencies and then I s we send it out and consider it or do you want me to just go with the two companies that responded? What do you, what do you I mean? would I like would like to see at least two to three company and the information about them uh, and, for us to review. And then send it out and then we can maybe decide whether or not we want to have a, uh, people come and present at the board or if you, if yeah, the information's right. enough. It, okay, so I'll get on that. That would be my thought. I have another, um, I would suggest that we really try to lean to the companies that are education based rather than just I don't mean it in a uh, derogatory way, but uh, rather than just headhunters. Okay. Carol, I agree. I think that we need to stick with those that have the education background. So would it be reasonable if I can get this information and get it to you by Monday so that then 
after I send it to you, you would respond and let me know if you want anybody to come and present or if you, how you want to proceed so that, because if we're going to have people re present at the board meeting on the second, we need to get in touch with them and notify them and get them on the agenda. Or if you just want to review the, their information. And well, you've got, you have two companies that you've, you're looking at. If you get a third, can we just not invite those three to come and present? It's, I'm asking, that's, that's what I'm asking. I don't know how you want me to proceed. I, if you just want the information to, to consider and review, if you think, or if you want to get it and then decide, I think, uh, yeah, I still want them to come and present so I hear them, or if you want, you know. Can I ask the question to Nisha? What do you, what do you recommend? Because it is, you know, later on in the year, is it, should we have those three come in or should we just go with somebody that knows, a, knows school process, somebody that is familiar with our area? Well, I think the hiring of a superintendent, you guys know, is the most important thing that the board is going to do. You are hiring someone to say, okay, you are gonna be in charge of the district, you're gonna be the CEO of it. So I think you, even though I know Mr. Shalou, there's a concern that there, you're, the time timeline is a concern for sure, but I think you need to go through a thorough process. Um, and if the board will, you know, it's really what you guys want in terms of your next superintendent. And you wanna make sure that the process involves all the stakeholders, obviously you've already right. stated that. So it's gonna be a timeline and, you know, determine when you wanna have that superintendent come in, work your way backwards from that. But I would, I, I would strongly consider doing a thorough search. Yeah. I, I couldn't Definitely. agree more. I couldn't agree more. Yeah. And uh, uh, I'd even like to look at these, you know, you shared this information with us here, but I would like to see some of this information. Well, that's what I'm saying. Okay, I'm going to say it louder. Uh, Jim, I think for your birthday next year, I'm going to get you a hearing evaluation. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay, I'm going to use my teacher voice. What I was proposing is that I find out all the information I can on all the companies and then I email it to you and get it to you hopefully by mm -hmm. Monday or Tuesday of next week. And then you'll have a chance to look at it. Yeah. And then you'll need to respond and if you don't respond, I will call you yeah. and let me know your, your thoughts on bringing one or two companies to the board to, to present yeah. and just make a decision <clears throat> on the second, so is that, a, is that agreeable? Yeah, sure. it'd doable? be a similar process to the architect thing, I guess, is what I'm Well, thinking. it would be an open session, okay. and they would probably do a presentation and explain, and okay. have, but again, I just wanna make sure that I know what you want me to do, and anybody can volunteer to help me research <laughs> on the internet if they choose, that would be fine with me. I'd be glad to. Okay. I would too. I, I would be happy to, to help okay. with that so, search as well. But I'm going to try to get the information from the companies. It's, uh, and right. I think what I'll do on the ones that didn't respond, you know, they had this little form. I'll just call and then we'll go from there and see what we can get. And if anybody knows of any other companies and you want to send that information, that's fine too. So When will this position be posted? Well, after we decide the... If, if we decide on a company, then they will take it in terms of posting it and doing the whole thing. They will advertise, they will, they will take charge of that, that aspect. And just remember, um, there is a policy in terms of, like if you're gonna have a company do it, then you'd go through the RFQ process, unless you wanna make an exception to the policy, because it would be, if you're quoting a price over 15,000. Really, we do an art, because I, I'm just, I'm just surprised well, because well, we never did what, that before. That's what you're doing anyway. Well, you're going to invite them right. to come right. and present. Right. Yes. They're going to give you the fees, that and then we're right. going to choose. Right. Okay. Yeah. Well, we definitely want to go with a very thorough process. search and process, okay. right? But definitely. Uh, my goal is that we could hopefully move forward by the next meeting. So, so if, we, we can... if, you, if we gather this information, you get it all to us, and we pick two, three, whatever, then hopefully by the next board meeting, that would be we would goal. have people presenting. Yep, and okay. we could make a decision because at that time then the starts, right. the clock starts ticking right then. and we can start the whole thing. And I'm, 
I'm just going to ask people also to be, um, w let us know what dates, what evenings are good for you because I expect that we might have to have some special board meetings to do some of those things to get the ball rolling. Like, like they would meet with stakeholders, they're also going to want to meet with the board and get what qualities do you want in the superintendent, that kind of thing. So it, we might have to have extra board meetings so that we can move things along. So do we need a kind of motion or anything to say <clears throat> we want to move forward or do we just? I think she had a question. Well, uh, Michelle, I'm I sorry. don't want to make a motion now. Actually, I want to um, kind of speak to our um, community and our parents just about this week and how um, I know that many of you are very sad and very um, maybe even confused and and feeling that all the time that you've spent and dedicated to our district the last five years, from Prop S to Dr. Dr. Whipke to Dr. Patel, you're thinking, we have another amazing person leaving our district. And I think as a board, we need to make sure that we can look for an amazing superintendent. I just wanna make sure that we all support that superintendent and welcome them in. And, and Mr. Shalou, when you say that Clayton is the, how did you say the, what'd you, how did you Camelot. describe? Camelot, he said Camelot. Camelot. I really wish you would look at Fox as a Camelot. Because you know why? Our kids are amazing. And yeah, they may have more money. And I, I just, it makes me so super sad that you don't think that this district is, is as good as Clayton. Well, let me clarify that. I said that since you directly put that toward me, I said that superintendents that were looking for jobs considered that a Camelot district, since they have twice as much money, they pay a lot better than we do, and they look at it that way. I have been in this community all my life, and I have worked in this community all my life, and I have supported this community all my life, and the fact that you would even suggest something like that shows me that you are not aware of what's going on. And I'm disappointed in you, Michelle. Wait, wait a minute, let's talk about this a little bit more. You accuse me of not voting for Prop S2 in public, which was a lie. Now, if you're going to attack me, then you better be careful because you better have your facts correct. Jim, okay. I did not personally attack you but I know that there were board members who did not vote for Prop S because I was contacted, and I'm not gonna call those board members out. But Jim, I'm just saying. I call point of order. Well, he. We're not gonna engage in this. We're gonna stay on point. This is not a political meeting. It's a business meeting of the Board of Education, okay? And that's where we're gonna keep it. So. If somebody wants to make a motion to clarify the next steps, I would appreciate it so it's clear what we're doing. Thank you. Ms. Ms. Hanson, I make a motion that um, you do as you suggested, put the information together, and be sure that all of us get the information and uh, address it at the next board meeting. Can I get a second? Second, second Smith. Okay, all in favor? Yes. Yes. Motion passed. And that's it on our agenda tonight. Thank you very much. Can I get a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. All in favor? Yes. 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 Motion passed. Thank you for coming out, everybody. Appreciate it. trying to get a hold of Carol. Carol. <laughs>